If Facebook's removal of Australian news media content last Thursday caught your attention and you do not know why the ACCC is really shaking the media tree, then I have all the facts for you in this video. And I promise to deliver the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Now, if you've heard about Facebook's removal of Australian news media content last Thursday, and you were not affected, and your content on your page is still intact, and you don't really care why this is happening, then that's great. There's no need to um, listen any further. And quite frankly, I don't blame you because for the lay person, it's not as big a deal as many will have you believe. It's actually about whether Facebook and Google can make a commercial deal with the news media sites um, for their content. There is a little discrepancy on the side around breaking the way the internet works, which I'll share. And also um, there's a request to share algorithmic changes. So updates to the code ahead of the time. Um, but I'm gonna take you through a few slides and help you understand what's actually going on. Right, so let's get to the interesting part. The inventor of the World Wide Web, his name is Tim Berners-Lee. Um, he's written to the Australian Senate because he's concerned that the proposed news media and digital platforms mandatory bargaining code, which we'll get to in a minute, is fundamentally asking to break the internet. So he has highlighted that, um, that you can't really charge someone for linking uh, to somebody's information because that's the whole premise of the internet. All right, so the proposed bargaining code sets out to provide arbitration if Australian news media organisations and the digital platforms, namely Google and Facebook, cannot agree on commercial or financial terms for news media content. It also asks the digital platforms to give the news media organizations notice of any algorithmic changes prior to them to going live. Um, I note that none of us, the rest of us, no other industry, business or consumer would receive this privilege. Interestingly, for me in particular, is that Google and Facebook are the only digital platforms affected by the legislation. In fact, they've been individually named and other companies, which also allow search and give us the ability to find news, um, such as Apple and Microsoft. And I note that Twitter, I've talked about Twitter um, being a great source for news content. And my good friend, Howard, who's a BBC journalist, I did a video series with him and none of those are named or included. So this is singling out Facebook and Google. So it's literally a conversation or um, a debate between John Friedenberg, the Australian treasurer, treasurer representing news media organisations through the ACCC and the Australian Communications and Media Authority, and Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook founder, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, the Google founders. What I found particularly interesting was that the, um, so non-government funded Australian news media organisations, so my images on the right, they're able to seek a triple C arbitration to help them get a commercial or financial um, package remuneration from Google and Facebook. But the ABC and SBS, which I've, I'm showing their logos on the left, uh, these are the news media channels and organizations that we as taxpayers fund are excluded and they're receiving, um, they're not allowed to receive any financial reward from Google or Facebook. So it's only um, the commercial businesses. So, um, but the ABC and SBS are included for the purpose of receiving information on code updates as in algorithmic information or changes that might affect um, their content being published or, or linked to on, the, on Google or Facebook. The other thing that I know, and I would imagine most Australians are aware of this, is that nearly all the major Australian papers are either owned by News Corp, which is formerly News Limited, 
and that's the Murdoch family, or Nine Entertainment Co, which was formerly Fairfax, and that's the Packer family. And then there's also the third sizable media group in the mix is the Seven Group, which brings the Stokes family into the mix. So it, it does feel a little bit like um, it's these three families uh, uh, that are, you know, specifically interested in this code going ahead. All right, what's also interesting is that Facebook and Google have been developing news media products for the last couple of years. And they have been talking to the publishers and journalists saying that they would love their content, love them to register, and, um, and that they will pay them for content coming on the platform their platforms. Now remember that um, Facebook and Google do not produce content themselves. They are the means for delivering it. So Facebook, um, you have to put your own content on that platform and uh, Google will, you know, use its bots to seek out information. So I like to think of Facebook like it's, because um, it's social media, I like to think of it like it's hanging out in a beer garden, you, you know, that's family friendly, where kids can come to, and um, it's, a, it's a social setting. Um, and Google, I like to think of that like the modern day um, Encyclopedia Britannica, <laughs> so, or a set of encyclopedias. So we used to have to have everything printed and in books and on a bookshelf if you wanted to know any kind of world, worldly information. And um, now that is all indexed. Uh, in a similar way to a library um, and managed by the librarians, which are the Google bots. Um, so what's really interesting is, um, so they've been developing these products and they've been asking for the publishers and, and journalists to register. And these negotiations started in 2019. Now Apple actually pipped Google and Facebook to the post with their, new, their own news media product in March 2019, um, but they have not been included in this code. So um, Google then launched its news media product um, a couple of weeks ago. So they've just launched it in February 2021, literally days ago. And in the most recent weeks and days, they have been negotiating with news media organizations and successfully agreed to financial terms. So. Um, those three families or three big conglomerates, news media conglomerates, have been uh, promised a $30 million paycheck per year for in having their news fed through the Google product. Um, what's come to light, though, is that the, there's various bodies that um, look out for journalists and, and media organisations and, and new media media as well. Um, so there's a group called the Media Entertainment and Arts Alliance who've been a key advisor in the process of developing this code and they've raised concerns that um, they're worried that the code, the, the version that's been submitted has lost uh, the, the part where it says what the funds, what that 30 million that each media organization gets where it what it can be used for so they wanted it to just be used for journalistic purposes but they're worried that it might go you know into the business and, and out to the shareholders so google has um basically come to the party and i guess the code in some ways has done its job or the threat of bringing through this legis the threat of bringing through this legislation has done its job and they have come to an agreement with um, the news media publishers. Facebook, on the other hand, has taken a different approach. They've chosen to remove, as they did last week, which they've probably just hidden, all the Australian news content from the social media platform um, on the basis that they don't want to co contravene the impending legislation. So if the legislation comes through this week, uh, which is the last week of February 2021, um, then they want to make sure that they've kind of crossed the T's, dotted the I's, and um, there's no media um, content that's linkable from their platform um, so that they don't have to, you know, pay on that basis. Um, 
and they've said that it's only 4% of the content of their platform. So it's really not a big deal for them. And to be honest, my understanding is that Facebook, um, you know, really they, they want social media channels to be a happy, enjoyable place to hang out. And sometimes the news uh, can be bad news. So it's not always um, a, a, a good thing to have your, your feed on your social media pages filled up with neg negativity. So they've been trying to fight negativity and fake news and all of this. So it kind of takes a bit of a headache away from them. <laughs> so um, I can see why they might have taken a slightly different stance to Google. So now we just sit and wait and we find out whether this new legislation for the mandatory bargaining code for news media and digital platforms becomes law. And if so, how Google and Facebook will, um, you know, continue on thereafter. So I hope you found this interesting. I will uh, keep you informed.